All right, guys, we're back on the off day. To, uh, kind of talked about today, we're talking about the different schedules between minor league baseball road, how it used to be, how it is now. Uh, just kind of touching on this real quick. Obviously, we're changing the structure of this podcast a little bit. You know, we used to have some 30 to 45 minute conversations, but with the fact that we're in season, we're both on the, all three of us are on the road. It's hard to kind of line up schedules. We're just kind of linking up about one time a week for 15 to 20 minute conversations going over just a general topic. Um, so today we're touching on, uh, just kind of the road, the road and how that is for us. Um, what are, what are some things that generally, you know, you guys have been around too, obviously. And, and, and have any of y'all been around pre, uh, CBA for, for traveling? Yeah. Okay. So what, what, what for you guys was the biggest difference you saw post CBA? Um, I would have to say just, you know, actually being able to settle in to cities, you know, playing yeah, yeah, yeah. six games a week. I feel like, I feel like the travel schedule is a lot better because you're not just, oh, three games here, then you got to go right back home, this and that. So you're actually able to get a little comfortable and settle in. But um, I would say the biggest difference, though, is having to face the same team twice. Yeah. As yeah, far yeah, as being yeah. a reliever. And then, like... Oh, within the same week span? Yeah. yeah, within that same week span where in the big leagues, like, if you face a team twice, you're probably down in the next two days. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. The next. And you see yeah. them a month later. Like, now, yeah. it's right. All right. You might... Yeah. Happened to me last week. We go to Portland. We had eight games in six days. Mm. So, I'm that was already, yeah, that was already <laughs> tough. <laughs> yeah, two doubleheaders. Yeah, well done. And um, went, uh, no, what was it? Thursday, go out there, punch out the side. And then they brought me back Friday night. And then I only got two out in the inning. And I faced the whole same lineup that I did. Mm. And it was the same guys that I faced three weeks ago. So yeah. it was just a little bit different. And like guys just have they they just start locking in on, on your pitch sequences. They do. Yeah, because yeah, dudes like are good, man. Especially yeah, yeah. Like when you get That's to the level of, you know, kinda we're on the brink of it a little bit of double A, you know, when guys you start to see like true talent, you know, yeah. and where David's at it's even more disciplined. The strike zone's smaller than the big leagues right now, you know, so it's like some people kind of look at the Jackson Holiday thing like, why did he struggle in the big leagues? Like, the strike zone in AAA is like this. You know? literally, literally <laughs> yeah, like the strike that, zone, yeah. the strike yeah. zone in the big leagues is a lot better. Like, pitchers have yeah. a little bit more of an advantage with whatever yeah. the case may be. But to be tested, like, guys are good. If you have to see them on back to back days, like B does, and like they know his thing is cut a slider and they got fooled on it once the night before, like, that's the tough part of being a starter. <laughs> In the same game, seeing guys two, three times, David, you yep. can talk on that, yep. but like Absolutely. it's just the repetition of you're not going to fool Mookie Betts three times in a row with the same pitch. Nope. No, no, <laughs> and no, that kinda, has to be your pinnacle when you think of the best hitters. Like you have to go against yeah. the best. Yeah, so I'll kind of I'll kind of touch on it real quick. So obviously, for for those out there that don't know the difference, so the CBA was introduced in 20, 22, 22 right? That was yeah, when everything 22. started signing, and then I think mm-hmm. it actually played into officially in twenty three is when everything started mm-hmm. coming in. So, so pre CBA, I remember. Uh, man, I no, remember after the, COVID, sorry, after no, COVID, COVID, they had uh, six COVID? game, six games. That's right. A that's week. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's twenty one. Right. So, so, so pre pre that year, I remember in twenty eighteen, for instance, I was in the South Atlantic League, which is uh, before they before they changed all the structures of the teams. That's the one that uh, was high as Lakewood and as low as Rome, Georgia. Um, and that one, that was the worst league to travel in by far from what I've heard across the, the board. And the reason why is because uh, now for the CBA, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Reggie, but I'm pretty sure it's like anything over a six-hour drive, you have to have two buses, correct? Yeah, it's, it's like it's like mileage. It's 250. Yeah, so, something so that, like that. that. So, like, yeah. so all I remember is is 2018 Rome, Georgia trip. We get done with a game in Lakewood, New Jersey at, call it, 6 p.m. on a Sunday. And we had an off day on Monday. Well, guess what? We drove the entire day through our off day right after the game, 6 p.m. We get into Rome, Georgia, probably around 8 a.m. the next morning or something like that. And I just remember doing a three-game series there and then hopping right back on the road and going up to Greensboro, North Carolina. So, like, this is one of those things that, for me, is 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 really big to kind of help balance out this, like, travel schedule is not having to go somewhere for three days, kind of like Brendan was saying, and feeling like you can't settle in. Because, like, like you, you're living out of a suitcase, right? You can't even 
can't put anything in a drawer because you're just leaving in three days. For then real. on top of that, you don't really have time to get used to a schedule there. So you're kind of you're kind of on the fly. Yep. What do I do in the morning? Am I going to go run and try to find a Starbucks somewhere and grab some light breakfast, or am I just going to wait till I get to the field and then hit spread when I get to the field? Like you got it. You got to kind of. That doesn't come till three o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do wait. Um, and, and you know, I'm I'm looking at it now, and I think that 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 for me, obviously, I I'm, I run I run heavily off of a routine. And it's hard for me to kind of find that road routine and season. Like, what's it look like? Do I get up at the same time every day? Then you got the games where it's like, hey, I'm not getting back at the hotel until, you know, midnight. Like, am I waking up at 930 in the morning? Probably not now. Like, I'm going to wake up at 1030 or, you know, something like that. Um, what what do you guys see on the bullpen side? How do you how do you keep it a little bit more routine when you have these six days here? Like, is there is there a better routine for you guys, or does it really affect you? Um, I I say more so it's a throwing schedule. So okay. like, yeah, your outings change per day, like week to week, and everything like that. You're not going to throw on the same day, but. It's just the fact of, okay, we have six days here. Two of these, I know I'm taking super light. The other ones, I'll take moderate, light to moderate. And then if I haven't touched the mound in a couple of days, then I'll do light throwing program, touch and feel, and make sure I'm still ready for the game. So it's yeah. easier to plan out your routine. And then like also at the same time, just being adjusted to the setting too of like yeah, the bullpen, great. what type of work can you get in, just everything like that, to where you just have to adapt to your surroundings. You know, you're not gonna always have oh, yeah. the same accessibility that you have at home. But yeah. like after that Tuesday, cool, you'll be adjusted. You know how to go about your week, you know where I could do yep. this and that, as opposed to in the past. If you're there for three days, all right, you don't adjust day figure one. Out. Yeah, figure yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think oh, yeah. I somewhat lucked out because um, unlike B in 2019, I was still in the extended spring training complex league. So, like, I never really left Florida. So my first full season, season experience was 21, like, six game set. So, and I, I only hear rumors of the the death trips that people used to take oh, yeah. after a 10 o'clock game going to uh, a six hour drive to play the next day. Yeah. Anyway, but like, like, B's to B's testament, a throwing schedule was huge for me. Like, I try to. Key stay on the same throwing schedule no matter how I'm feeling, right? So, yeah. like, if I pitch on a Tuesday, I know Tuesday night that I'm throwing my next touch and field on Friday because yeah. that gives me a light day on Wednesday. I stretch it out day on Thursday. And the reason I stretch it out on Thursday because I'm technically available for that game. So, but I just want to get my arm open just in case I throw, but I don't want to tax it by any extra mound throws. And really, in the touch and field, like, I'm really just trying to find the box. Like, yeah. not necessarily focusing on anything else mechanically, just, like, trying to find the box with all of my shapes, my pitches, just make sure I'm staying sharp because as a reliever, like, you throw, all, like, it's so unpredictable when you throw, the amount of times you throw. BJ said he's going back-to-back -back facing the same guys, so it's like you have to kind of work in your own off days. I've also yeah. heard um, yeah. we have a guy in our clubhouse that used to play with Adam Onovino. I think he's with the Mets. Right now, Adam on yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. But they say on the veto on his day after, he wouldn't throw at all. Yeah, but he's been doing back to backs in the big leagues for the past eight to ten years. They said like if he had to go back to back, his first time to throw would be getting loose for the game. Mm, yeah. So if he didn't throw in that game, he bought himself a day down completely. Yeah, yeah. which is like. I mean, but like to each his own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's also like that testament where we're at the level now to where it's like, you're good. Like, you're good enough to mm -hmm. do it. It's just, yeah. do you have that much faith in yourself to take that yeah, full day yeah, off yeah, the throw? Yeah. And then yeah. be like, because like, know, there were times, <laughs> no, but like, I even had to do it in spring training, readjusting to this schedule to where it was yeah. like, dude, I'm sitting here. I'm I'm sitting in the room talking to my roommate, and he's just like Tyler Hoffman. He went to a uh, perk with Dartani, and um, he was sitting there. And I said, I said, dog, like I don't really ever see you throwing. Like even though we work out on different fields and everything, I was like, I really don't ever see you like throw that much. And he goes. Yeah, nah, dude. Like, even whenever they pull up for spring training games on the backfield, you know how they're like, hey, throw right before the game. Like, he doesn't pick up a ball until they tell him to get hot, and then he'll go out there and sit 96 to 100. And he's like, 
Okay. Well, also at the same time, like he's dealing with his own stuff. He's dealing with his yeah. own stuff. Like everybody has their thing, and he said that to me like second week of spring training. And I'm like, bro, you're on the fresh. Like you can build your stuff out. And then I actually tried it. I actually tried it. Like later on in spring training, and I'm like, dude, like my body's tired. Mentally, I know what cues I need to hit. So, boom, I was like, you know what? I'm going to wing it. I got a couple good ones under my belt. So, if this one doesn't go the best, hey, we, we'll just come back the next time. And oh, yeah. it actually was good, oh, yeah. though, because, like, think about it. How yeah. many times in throwing program, right after you get done with plyos, you feel so crispy. So crispy. Then you pick up that baseball, and it feels like your arm just crumbled. Yep. Or now we're on a different page. Yeah, like, yep. three, so, yeah, like three hours later. <laughs> yeah. Like three hours later, you pick up the ball and then it's like, yep. geez, crap. And then you're yep. like trying to refine basically that sharpness that you had earlier in the day. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, holy crap. Like, oh, I yeah. see what you're saying. <laughs> And I had my yeah, best. I, I had my best stuff. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if y'all feel this too. But kind of talking about like that routine, right? So this is basically like tying back into this. Do y'all feel on like like Sunday morning games, for instance? Is that not the most difficult day to get hot? I don't know. I'm kind of growing a love hate relationship with the day games. Okay. Okay. Love Only it. reason because one, we get done at four yeah, o'clock. Yeah. So early. Yeah. yeah. Two. I feel like I'm just got a little bit fresher, dude. I'm, I'm there in the morning. Like sometimes I get so bored sitting around in my room waiting for like a three o'clock stretch that by the yeah. time I get to stretch, I'm like, dude, I'm a tired. tired already. But like, yeah. if yeah. I know by like twelve o'clock, hey, you get hot for the game, I'm like, bet. Man, let me get this over. Yeah, I, think, boom, I, think boom, boom. I think it's. I think it's that you have less time to think about. It. Like you're, you're, yeah. you're like, oh, like we got a baseball game, we got to play. Yeah, we're you in a day game. Yeah, let's go. Time. Yeah. Facts. So like how I told you last week. Came in, punched out the side, 11 a.m. camp day. Yep, yeah. We rolled out, we rolled out for 945. <laughs> bro, bro, we rolled out for 945 stretch, right? I'm sitting there, and I'm, like, dragging. Like, it's 945 in season. Like, dog, we're all tired. And then I'm just like, all right. I made sure I threw, I literally threw out to, like, 80 feet. I maybe only made 15 throws, right? Four of those was just feeling out a pitch. And once I saw that they were all like in the general area, I said, "Bet I'm done." And then, and then by the time, like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Well, twelve forty five rolls around. <laughs> we're in like the sixth inning. They call down. They like, "Hey, get Hardy hot." Boom! I just get up, start throwing, and I'm like, "Yo, this is the best I felt in a minute." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was just like go out there, you load up the zone, and I was like, "Dude, I love the early game because like middle of the day, that's whenever you're you're most energetic." Yeah, and also in the day game aspect, it's like, all right, Sundays suck to throw. Like, never yeah. really want to be available for a yeah. Sunday, but at the same time, that's where I feel like you can mentally mature because nobody wants to be there. Like yeah. the hitters don't want to be there. Oh, for sure. The yeah, umpires don't want to be there. Like mm-hmm. at this point, they have five. The umpires have five games under the belt. They have probably gotten blown up fifteen times throughout the series yeah. already, right? Yeah. So like I literally yeah. have seen some umpires just like after the fifth in a Sunday game just mentally tap. Like hey, if you put it towards the plate, I'm yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Yeah. Facts. Facts. But like that's the uh, best yeah. part. Yeah. That's the best part about the day game. Is it that, is like especially position players. The guys that started last they don't night, be there. They don't they, yeah, like, be there. Dude. They're still trying to catch up, and then they yeah, and then like there, their bro. starter comes out. He's fresh. He's just sitting there loading it up. They're mm-hmm. over there just getting beat already. So then it's like, don't yeah. give them any yeah. chance of life at all. Yeah, they're already right. they throw. Dog, That was in the other box, bro. What are you doing? Not <laughs> even. But not even. It's just like, bro, <laughs> just, bro, just, bro, just loading yeah. everything up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's yeah. just like. I want to right run. I want to run back to something real quick. So, so earlier in this conversation, we were talking about one of the difficult things is is facing the same lineup on a Tuesday and then facing them again on Friday, right? So, yeah. you, you're looking at it saying these guys have an advantage because they know me, but wouldn't you also argue that you have an advantage because you know them? Yeah, but I mean. It's funny, though, because everybody will talk about the statistics of the game, but they don't factor in human adjustment and human error, Mm -hmm. too. Where, like, for example, I struck out one guy on three pitches. Like, 
just boom, 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 see you, right? The next, <laughs> the next time that I saw him, it was <sighs> still strike one, still strike two. Then didn't execute one. Yeah, didn't execute one. Line drive foul, and I was like, "Oh crap!" All right, boom. He's seeing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he's seeing it. He's seeing it. The same pitches that I made him look goofy on the night before. Yeah. Like he's starting to see it now. Yeah. And then once I go to my like my put away spot that I normally steal strikes from, single up the middle, and it was just like, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, think, I, think, I think what what I what I see more than anything because obviously like the difference I'm, I'm, I've been in the bullpen this year and I've been you know starting this year so I think that for me the big thing I pick up on is like very subtle almost like uh, like the presence of the hitter you can kind of tell when a guy's like like pushing for that swing right so like if you made that guy look stupid for you know one ab two abs whatever on 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 Tuesday or Wednesday and then you're back on Friday sometimes you can kind of see that guy's like oh I need to get him back to this. And like when I see mm-hmm. that, then I then I see I'm in the driver's seat because then it's like okay, this is when they start to make good mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it's just like anything changing, changing high levels, changing in and out. Like you can, when you see that guy that's up there and and they're pushing for that hit, like like, like pressing, I, man, you can tell. I'm not pressing. I'm not a hitter, so I I'm not gonna try to sit here and say that they're doing something wrong. But like <laughs> so but like you know, I can see, you know, you can see that yeah. you know, those guys that are like, ooh, like. Like, I'm calm, I'm collected, and I'm just waiting for something to come to me. Those are the ones I have an issue with. It's like, okay, like, oh, yeah, well, I don't know. Those are I don't annoying, know. Right? Like, well, that's the Eastern <laughs> League for you. That's the Eastern yeah. League for you. Yeah. It's literally like, yo, everybody, I promise you, the only time you really know what their approach is, is I threw a cutter away. And Buddy had overswung, like he had, like he thought it was a slider, so he's swinging like off the plate, and he barely fouls it off. That's the only time, bro. That's the only time that you start knowing where, like they're actually looking and what mm-hmm. they're looking for. Because, mm-hmm. bro, after that, <laughs> the, the dude had the same presence the night before, and then that same day where he's yeah. just in the box, he's just kind of chill. Like everybody just is looking, yeah. like, all right, throw it yeah. up here. Like I got a barrel for it. Yeah. And the thing, you don't really also the thing with um, like facing the same guys over and over is like yeah they've seen you but with how advanced technology is nowadays like they've seen you before they even step in the box right like for me and Brennan whenever yeah, they I see us those eye spin machines bro whatever have you seen or those? like even this yeah those are cool but like even the scouting reports that like people have right so like let's just say they see Brennan right out of the bullpen they have two iPads right here yeah. like what he does versus righty what he does versus lefty his percentages this and that mm-hmm. all right if he falls behind 1-0 you're getting it you're, you're getting a cutter away like right yeah, okay. so like and that's the don't be giving out the beauty and the core and the beauty and curse of playing between like double and up is that like david you got to where you are because you do what you do really well yeah. right so like mm-hmm. you're not going to go in there trying to blow uh a two zero heater by the three hole hitter, right? and he knows that. Like yeah. it's it's on the it's on the scout, right? So like that's yeah. that's the tough part about yeah. pitching at higher levels is that like these yeah. guys know what they're doing, but that's where the human aspect, like Brennan, comes you know, into play exactly. of like going against the grain. You call it, you call it tough, and it is. It's, it's a learning, right. yeah. It's it's a learning curve for sure. Like I'm not I'm not saying it's easy, but I think yeah. it's also one of those things that. That if you've got a little more experience than the guys on the plate, then you, you've got the advantage there because then there then mm-hmm. there's that that aspect of like they're the ones that are typically the one pushing and reaching. And it's like okay, like I've been through this process countless times in my career. I'm not going to change who I am just because the situation dictates it. Like no, like I'm going to do this because this is what I do in this situation. And then typically, really well. dude, hitting yeah. like we talk we talk about this all the time. Hitting's hard. Hitting's really difficult. Like, like I gave up. I gave up two bombs yesterday or, or last week, for instance. Like, threw a really good game, went through it all, and and at the yeah. end of it, I'm looking back and I'm like, okay, like that was a really good game. But what happened? It's like two pitches that I actually executed, and they just beat me. It happens sometimes. Like you can just tip it up and walk on. But other than that, as long as you're sticking to the game plan, typically good things happen. Facts. I mean, I, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, hitting is yeah. hard. It doesn't seem that hard whenever it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Isn't that frustrating? Have you ever get those sign out a heater and then you come sit and you're like, he totally knows this is coming. He totally knows. <laughs> <laughs> every, time, every time I'm not the one who's like, I want to throw a heater and my catcher puts it down, I'm like, 
<laughs> like he knows it's coming, <laughs> bro. He knows it's coming. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, bro. Ego he gets up and in on the hands. This game will get you. Man. This game will get, it humbles you real quick. Real <laughs> bro, quick. Look, God, I wasn't that. I was not that cocky to begin with. I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to keep humbling. <laughs> Um, all right, but, guys, uh, good, good spot to wrap it up for the day. Let's uh, let's keep it going next week and having a good conversation. Always a good one, guys. Yes, sir. Always a joy. <laughs> 